Hey guys, what is up? My name is Hyperac, and I got a different kind of video for you today. Once again, it is a technology kind of video, and I got bored one day when I was off, and I decided to list all my parts on PC Part Picker to see how much my entire build would cost. That includes the computer tower itself with all the components, that includes the monitors, my keyboard, my mouse, and my headsets, along with the mic. And as you see on the list here, some things are not clickable where you can buy them. And that's because they are products that are discontinued. An earlier generation or the first generation of a product. And so I had to put in the price of what I have paid for it. Other things I went with the price of what was the lowest amount it was selling. Which Newegg, or not Newegg, PC Part Picker graciously does for you. So... We're just going to scroll down a little. And you're going to see that the total cost of my build right now is sitting at a thousand seven hundred and thirty-nine dollars and twenty-nine or twenty-seven cents. Granted, I could say both of them headsets. I don't use it at the same time, but that is part of my setup. I use them, so. That being said, I have put together a build that takes the money limit that this computer, that this setup could sell for, and put it into, if I had that money, what I could get with it, the parts of a new build. So, without further ado, I will show you what I have managed to put together. So, starting out with the motherboard, I've chosen the Gigabyte. GAZ97 LGA1150 ATX Intel motherboard. This can tell you a couple things of the basis of the build. First off, it's Intel, so it's an Intel based build. It is an 1150 socket, so it's narrowing it down even more, and it's also ATX, which means you get an idea of how big it's going to be because ATX motherboards only fit in mid tower or full tower. Unless you cram it in a mini micro or some other kind of tower that I have not listed or don't know of. But the reason why I chose this motherboard is because it supports overclocking. It will help you get the most performance before your components start to shut down from overheating or because they get unstable. So with that being said, it has plenty of expansion slots. So if you ever wanted to upgrade down the road you have the slots to do so it supports I want to say 64 gigs of RAM which overkill for me 16 maybe even 32 would be the best and offers four USB 3.0 ports on the rear and two 2.0 ports on the rear so it's a pretty pretty good motherboard Going on to the next item, and I've chose the Rosewell 650 watt modular power supply that is 80 plus bronze certified. This was chosen for a couple of reasons. One being that it's modular because it makes cable management hell of a lot easier. You don't have to worry about having to twist tie all your cables or zip tying all your cables. It's 80 plus bronze certified, which means that it is energy efficient. You won't have to burn as much power to get this thing to do what it's supposed to do it's ready for the fourth gen of Intel CPUs which is what I have chosen for this build and it supports SLI which there's another indicator of parts I'm going to be using SLI goes strictly to your GeForce graphics cards Intel fourth gen I should also tell you that that narrows it down quite a bit All right. So we're going to go on to the RAM, and I've chosen the G-Skill Value 16 gig kit that has two 8 gig sticks of 240 pin DDR3 RAM. The reason why I chose this is because for the case I've chosen, it does not have a side window, so it doesn't have to be anything flashy. And for the price of it, you can't beat it. I could have gone with something a little bit higher than 1600 but... I didn't really see the point because, like I said, for the price and what I was getting would suit me just fine. 16 is the sweet spot for me because of 
playing games, live streaming, editing, recording, so on and so forth. So, not going to be too picky with it. I'm going to go on to the next item, which is the Corsair Hydro Series H50 120mm Quiet Edition Liquid CPU Cooler that supports Intel-only processors. And specifically, this is going to be supporting the i5 that I have in the build. And the reason why I chose this is because Corsair is a really, really respectable brand. They deliver quality along with their name. And because this is liquid cooling, which means it's going to help keep the processor a lot cooler than just regular air cooling or stock fan cooling. I know they're one and the same, but stock and aftermarket, two different things. So had to list it there just in case and also because I have chosen this one it'll mount perfectly in the case I've chosen and I will explain to you later in the video when we get to the fa uh, the case so for the next item I've chosen the EVGA GeForce GTX 970 with 4 gigs of GDDR5 memory and a 256 bit interface and this is also PCI Express 3.0 by 16 with an ACX 2.0 cooling. Also supports SLI, so you can always bridge them together and get even more performance. Now the reason why I've chosen this video card is because I relate the, G the GTX 970 to my GTX 770. One is a 700 series, one is a 900 series. The only difference I really see in it is the fact that this is a more up-to-date card. It has two more gigs of GDR5 memory, which my 770 only has two gigs in memory. And so I see it as an upgrade to what I have. I love what I have, so this has to be hell of a lot better. It still has the ACX cooling, so which means it's going to stay cooler for a lot longer. It's going to last a lot longer, be able to disperse the heat better than the GeForce GTX 970s without the ACX and so that means that if I ever wanted to clock it or overclock it that it would be able to handle a lot higher clock speeds so that's why I've chosen this bad boy and plus it comes with your DVI digital connection your DVI what I'm going to refer to as analog connection also has HDMI port with a display port and your digital connection supports up to 4K monitors, which is a great thing because pretty soon we're going to be living in the world of 4K where every other house has it and then every house has it. So, got to prepare for the future. For the processor, like I've said, I've chosen Intel Core i5 4690K Devil Canyons Core Quad Core processor that has the 1150 CPU socket. And starts at a clock speed of 3.5 gigahertz. The reason why I've chosen this one instead of an i7, because the i7 not only is it $100 more, I feel like it'd be a little too much overkill. And building within the budget of $1,700, I don't want to go overboard with it. I wanted to have performance with making sense in my mind, because I take things a little bit differently than what other people do. But that, beside the point, the Devil Canyon's core is a great processor. It supports overclocking, so you can definitely get the performance behind it. It's an 1150 socket, which means that it's a versatile socket. So if I ever wanted to change motherboards, not a problem. It has hyper-threading, which means that when your computer reads it, it reads it as 8 cores instead of just a quad core. And being an i5, it's in that sweet spot. It's not too weak, but it's not too powerful because you don't want to bottleneck your computer by having too powerful of a processor. I don't think I would have that. Excuse me. I don't think I would have that problem even if I chose the i7. But I'm comfortable with the i5. So for the next item, I have chosen for my peripherals. I have chosen the Cooler Master Storm Devastator LED gaming keyboard and mouse combo in red because red is my favorite color. The reason why I've chosen this as my peripherals is because I have Razer and as nice as Razer could could look, I'm not really too happy with the mount or the keyboard I have. It is the Deathstalker Central. It shows everything on it. Granted the Cooler Master Devastator keyboard is also black. But then again the keys for the the 
Razor Deathstalker Essential. I just don't like because half the time I type, it doesn't read that I have pressed a button. And I have the Razor Naga 2014 edition. And I still think it's overpriced. I paid like $65 to $75 for these a piece. So I feel like it's just really overpriced. So for next, we're going to go on to the monitor, which I chose the BenQ 27 inch HDMI widescreen LED monitor. The reason why I've chosen this is because BenQ is a respectable brand also, and their gaming monitors are no exception. They are top of the line. You see them used in a lot of championship series. I believe StarCraft World Championship Series uses them. I believe I have seen Call of Duty Championships use them. They have quick response time. They have great refresh rates, so you get the better FPS that it supports. And plus, it supports HDMI, which is your digital connection, which offers better quality video. Enough said. And plus, it's widescreen. With widescreen, you have a lot better view than if it was just a standard 27-inch monitor. So, the widescreen, definitely worth it. And with it being on sale, saving $170, that's almost 50% savings. It shows me right here on Newegg, it's 46%. So... That's not a bad price for a monitor. For the next item, I have chosen as my operating system a Windows 7 Home Premium 64-bit. And the reason why is because it's Windows 7, you know. I haven't really tried Windows 8. Not really interested in trying Windows 8. Windows 10, once it upgrades, then yeah. But Windows 7, because I'm used to it, I'm used to how it operates, how it works, how to get around the bugs, and... Everything in 64-bit because 64-bit is a higher, I feel like it's a higher quality than just the regular 32-bit. So, for that, I would go 64-bit every time. Okay, so for, I also chose a sound card for this because I have had experience with onboard sound and then having a sound card. And having a sound card is a lot better audio quality than the onboard sound because this can get a lot more power to it has a lot more options because it also comes with the program to fine-tune your settings and so with the sound card I feel like you hear everything a lot better it's a lot crisp it's a lot clearer it is definitely worth it and with the creative sound no exception creative sound is like I'm gonna say one of the leading brands for sound cards and they definitely deserve it. So, with that being said, let's get to the next item. For the microphone, I chose the Snowball ISUSB microphone. The reason why I've chosen a Snowball, some people are like, oh, you should go for Audio Technica. I don't get too in-depth with the way I sound. I just wanted to have a USB microphone because when you use a headset that has a microphone built into it, you're splitting the power, so... An example I use is if it takes 10 power and you have the sound and you have your audio, like you have the microphone and you have the the headset, or the, I don't even know how to phrase it now, but it takes the power. So it takes 5 for you using the microphone and then 5 to use the headset to hear your sound. So you're getting reduced quality. Now, that's going to come contradicting for what I've chosen. I know that. I've done it on purpose, though. But for the Snowball, USB microphone offer better sound quality. So when I speak, it sounds a little bit more crisp, sounds a little bit more clear, a little more defined. Okay, and the headset's next, which I chose the HyperX Cloud Stereo Gaming Headset. And like I said, it has both the microphone and it still plays your audio. I wouldn't use it for the microphone. I would use it for the audio. And the reason why I've chosen this one is because it looks really comfortable. My problem with headsets is I have Turtle Beach X12s and X31s. The X12s are extremely uncomfortable. I had X11s, which were comfortable. It had the cushion foam that it never, never went, like never went down. Like the cushion never went bad in it. But the X12 is just, it's like it has no cushion to it. 
It's like it makes you want to kill yourself because it gets so uncomfortable. But the X31s, the cushion, it's still there. I use it every day I play games. Every day I'm on my computer, I use it because I play games every day, which sounds bad, but they're comfortable, they're reliable, I enjoy using them. And plus, they're wireless, which don't have to worry about the cables. And that's what I was kind of looking for in a headset, or that's what I was looking for. And from the looks of the headset, like the ear couplings, and comparing it to what I have, I feel like it'd be pretty similar. I feel like it'd be pretty comfortable. And, you know, also comes with a free gaming mouse pad. Who doesn't like free mouse pads? They're the bomb. From a hard drive, I chose a Seagate Barracuda. 2 terabyte, 7200 RPM, 64 megabit cache. Internal hard drive. The reason why I've chosen this one is because that's what I'm running in my computer now. It's reliable. You got your storage space. Right now, the memory that I'm using for my hard drive, I have all the James Bond movies that I like, which is all the Sean Connery and then the guy, Dennis Rodman. R R I'm sorry, sir, for butchering your name. Um, the ones with uh, Craig. The newest guy, uh, butchering that one. Sorry about that. I have Dragon Ball Z. I have all the videos I record that I try not to butcher. The videos for my streams and my games. And it stores it all, it reads it all, it does everything I need it to. No problem. So it has plenty of storage space and it's a really reliable hard drive. Other than that being said, I have no other reason for choosing it. I mean, it's it's reliable. Now, I'd also chose an SSD, which I chose the Oppo Top 128 gig SSD. And the reason why I chose an SSD to go with this build is because it's becoming a new standard for PC building. Because SSDs are faster, it's digital, it reads faster, it loads faster. So, using this as an operating system, or the boot disk for my operating system, will read Windows in a snap. You can count to 10, and it's already up from pushing the power button. 10 seconds later, you're already up on your desktop, ready to do whatever you want to do. So, that's just how the performance has increased over the years. And, of course, with this build, I have the, the funding to do so. So, there you go. Now, for... The next item, which is just an optical drive, I chose just a regular Samsung DVD burner optical drive because I have one on my computer now, and I figure why not just throw one in there for the hell of it, 20 bucks, who gives a shit? And for the case, uh, I chose the NZXT Source 210 Elite Black Steel case, and it supports USB 3.0, which is also becoming a standard for computer builds now. This is a mid-tower case, which gives you room to expand. And the reason why I chose this is because I've built an, an, an NZXT case before. It was a little difficult at first, but learning how the case was got it easier. And cable management is not a problem because they offer you all kinds of ways to hide your cables out of plain sight. Or where you can tie them off nice and neat so they're not everywhere and blocking airflow. And I chose it in the black because I feel like the white would show too much, even though people would say the same thing about black. And not only that, something I realize now is the power button and the reset button, you can actually mash with a finger. On my computer now, I have to use like a pen to reset my computer. My tower, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. And what I was talking about, the CPU cooler, like I said at the end of the video... What I'm talking about is, on the side here, that's an empty port, so you can always get a case fan. Them two are also empty, so you can get more case fans. So I would put the CPU cooler attached to probably the back one. And they get a case fan for the front top one, and then the side one. Granted, I did not add them into the build, but that's always something easy to go back. Five, ten dollars for the case fans, and you're good. So, now let's get to the grand total of this build, starting from the top going down see everything that I have chosen you see what you save the grand total for this build is a thousand dollars 
$1,655.86. Couldn't say that for a second. And with that, I feel like you're getting the performance behind it because you're getting an i5, you're getting a 970, you're getting 16 gigs of RAM, you're getting a 2 terabyte hard drive with 128 SSD, you're getting uh, some shitty little optical DVD drive. No one gives a shit. But you're also getting a gaming keyboard with a gaming mouse. You're getting a reliable headset. A comfortable headset. You're getting your USB microphone. You're getting a 27-inch widescreen HDMI LED monitor. You're getting a lot for the money, and it's just a great thing. I could have chose cheap parts and say, hey, I got $1,000 left over. But that was not the point of this. The point of this build was... If I had sold everything that I have now and used that money to get another PC, what would I get? And this is the answer here. I want to say one thing before I end the video. I left out my speakers, and that's because my speakers are like $20 speakers from Walmart. Completely shit. I rarely use them except for when I'm having to get ready and I can't wear a headset when I'm putting on a shirt, you know? <laughs> what a shame. What a shame, shame, shame. But I didn't include the speakers. I probably, even without adding them to the PC part picker list and, you know, getting an extra 20 bucks to spend, I still have enough budget where I could have gone back and got, like, a decent, like, surround sound. Like, PC surround sound. But I didn't. So, see me over that one. So, anyways, my name is Cypher. If you guys have enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you've enjoyed the video and you want me to do more of these things, leave a comment down in the section below. Let me know what I... Uh, what I could improve on in the video because your feedback is important to me if I don't know what you like and what you don't like then I won't be able to improve my quality of videos and I want to try to be appealing to you as possible I don't want to sit here and be some douchebag who thinks he's hot shit and people don't like I don't know how that kind of correlates into that but anyways my name is Cyber blah, 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 blah. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, feel free to subscribe. I upload gaming content mostly. This is the second video like this that I am going to be uploading. It took me a couple times to record this, 20 minutes at a time. And I do apologize for the length of the video. I explain a lot of the video, and hopefully you guys do not mind. With that being said, I want to say thank you guys for watching. It means a lot to me if you've watched all the way through the video. Thank you so much. And I hope you guys have a good day, take care, and I will see you guys later.